Good afternoon. I thought I'd share with you today a video I recorded back in the summer when the skies were blue and the days were long and warm and what better day to do that than on a cold, wet, miserable January afternoon. So I want to have a brief chat today about is Japanese knotweed. A uh, bit of background first, Japanese knotweed was brought over from Japan of all places in the 1830s to the Netherlands and then by the 1850s it had reached, uh, reached Old Blighty. The Gardeners at the time loved it because it produced a very thick, quick um, mass of a bush. Um, what they didn't realise really is once once it starts growing, it's very difficult to control. Um, it's a hardy perennial. It produces uh, dense annual stems, and the rhizomes of which grow underground. So it comes back stronger and stronger each year. The, the leaves on the plant are, are offset to the stem, so this can give the stem a bit of a zigzag kind of appearance. Um, and as us surveyors, we should be able to recognise where Japanese knotweed is growing um, and advise our clients accordingly. However, if only everything in life was that simple, we don't necessarily always know where it's growing. In the summer, if we're doing an inspection of a nice detached property in leafy Loughton or somewhere like that, then uh, yes, we'd be expected to identify Japanese knotweed if it's uh, growing away at the back of the garden somewhere. But if it's this time of year and the homeowners have cut it back and forked over their garden, we would be absolutely none the wiser. It could also be growing on the other side of a six foot fence. And for those surveyors uh, like myself that are vertically challenged, we're never going to know it's there. So it is important to identify it when we can and advise our clients on the most appropriate actions to take. Under the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981, it's, uh, it's an offence to allow Japanese knotweed to grow in the wild. And under the Environmental Protection Act, it's um, any soil that's taken away as part of remediation measures to get rid of Japanese knotweed must be considered as contaminated waste. Uh, the reason for this is twofold. Uh, the first is um, roots can grow down something like three metres. Um, and if a tiny little bit of that is left in place, then it will regrow. So you've, you've, you've spent thousands of pounds and not go anywhere with it. Uh, the second and probably the, the more serious aspect of that is that if that soil is just dumped somewhere else and it's got a two inch bit of a, of a root from Japanese knotweed, then it's found a new home. So now you've doubled the problem uh, potentially rather than cure it. So in this video, we can see the Japanese knotweed growing alongside this fence. This is 100 metres or so from the River Thames and on one of the, uh, the smaller tributaries. Here we can see the zigzag pattern we spoke about earlier. And as the video comes up, we can see how it's pushing through gaps in the concrete. What we can see here on first appearances is Japanese knotweed growing through concrete. While I guess that technically it is, it's not grown through set firm, good quality concrete. It's grown through what we'd call a day work joint between them. So damage from Japanese knotweed is misreported in my opinion. Um, yes, as we've seen on that video, it can grow through concrete, but if there's a gap in the concrete, if there's a crack in the concrete, like a day work joint, or where you've cast concrete in bays and you've only got a fibrous uh, board between the two, um, then it will find its way up through that. But if you've got a nice four inch or six inch slab for whatever reason, whether it's a patio, a car stand, a garage slab or anything, I, I would not expect Japanese knotweed to, to, to physically push that concrete apart to grow its way through it. But the media sometimes get hold of these things and, and they big it up. Um, so in terms of it causing damage to buildings, it probably needs a building that's in pretty poor condition. Uh, it will need gaps and that to grow, to grow through. So perhaps if you've got a, a, a small extension or even a big extension, it doesn't matter, on the back of your property, that's in poor condition and there's cracks in the brickwork, maybe there's been a bit of movement before, then yes, it will be able to grow through those. So the sensationalism of it can grow through buildings, it can grow through concrete, it can cause structural damage. Yes, but only if that damage was kind of there to begin with, it will just magnify it. So it needs something to actually grow through. I um, hope you found this interesting. It's a bit of a shorter video than the last few that, that we've put out. Um, if you do, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up so we can um, reach a wider audience. And as always, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. And um, if there's any particular topics you'd like covered, please let us know and we'll do that. Thank you very much.